And of course, all of you are here because you want to find out who Judge Majuj are, what's going to happen, and the epic saga that will take place, etc. Which I will tell you nothing about today, <laughs> nothing at all. I will, however, tell you that this is an area that requires uh, and and should get a lot of really interesting historical research. I think Muslim historians, if they haven't already, should go out to these locations where the Qarnayn went and do archaeological research and actually make even documentaries about this stuff. And then, of course, you know, there's the opinion of some ulama that Ya'juj and Ma'juj, according to what we find in the, in the Torah, because Ya'juj and Ma'juj are not just mentioned as a nation that goes crazy and drinks all the water in the world. It's not just mentioned as that, but they're also mentioned as the, the children of Yafis. If you know, Nuh has Sam, Ham, and Yafis. These are considered the, of the many offsprings of Yafis. Now, of the many offsprings of, of Yas, Yafis, from what uh, you know, uh, uh, Christian and Jewish sources and even some Muslim historic sources suggest, the Oriental nations and the Western European nations, Western and Eastern European nations, are all offspring of Yafis. And within them somewhere is Ya'juj and Ma'juj, you know, which is why in Desi culture it's con like, com like a common myth. That's oh, the Chinese. And the wall was the Great Wall of China. No, it wasn't. It's just... <laughs> uh, and they're coming with their toys, you know. <laughs> it's not that. So, and this this dam has actually been found also in in that mountain range. The dam has also been found, and we'll we'll see a little bit about that inshallah Taala when uh, we read the ayah, the, that part of the ayah. Anyhow, Yajuja Majuja, as we know, will come in waves, and they'll come and cause a lot of destruction. They're mentioned twice in the Quran. This is the first time we're coming across them in the Quran. So what we learn is these are a kind of warrior people. They come and they pillage other nations and they take their resources. Mufsiduna fil ard, they cause a lot of corruption in the land. Hatta idha futihat ya'juj wa ma'juj. And this will remain the case until the doors are, uh, until ya'juj and ma'juj are opened. Ya'juj and ma'juj are the great signs of the Day of Judgment. They're going to be mentioned, I believe, in Surah Al-Hajj also. <clears throat> we saw mention of them in Surah Al-Kahf. And so in the story of Dhul Qarnayn, we saw the mention of them. Um, you know, of course, classical scholars and contemporary scholars differ because the world around us has changed. Classical scholars would say things like, we don't know what they are, we don't even know if they're human, and you know, where this wall is, and now there's theories about where the wall is, and you know, there's, some, there's some remnants of a copper wall somewhere in the Balkan Mountains or something, and they've, they've made pictures of those, Allahu A'lam. But you know, some of the interesting theories that, were evolved, that, that, that came out in recent times, in like the last couple of hundred years about Ya'juj and Ma'juj, there were Indian scholars and certain Arab scholars that were colonized that believed that the Europeans are Ya'juj and Ma'juj. That they came from, because they came from the, the side, the, 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 where Asia touches Europe is the mountain range. And Allah is going to say, وَهُمْ مِنْ كُلِّ حَدَبٍ يَنْسِلُونَ They're going to come down from every hadab, every uh, uh, high valley. From every dune, many for every height, they're going to be descending down upon you, yeah, Juj and Majuj. And they, you know, they destroyed their resources and plundered, you know, Muslim lands and the eastern lands, etc. And now they've receded. And actually, this idea became so prominent in some of the scholarship that famous poet Iqbal actually wrote a poem about it, calling the Europeans Ya Juj and Majuj. And here you have the tafsir of Min Kulli Hada bin Yansilun. He actually put Min Kulli Hada bin Yansilun in his poem. <laughs> he went that far, so. I don't necessarily agree with that depiction, but it goes to show you that our um, that Islamic thought is necessarily a product of its time. Like the way I think about the Quran and you think about the Quran and we think about the seal of the Prophet isn't necessarily departed from the age in which we live, the society in which we live, the things that we've been exposed to or haven't been exposed to. It influences how we think, and we can't help but bring our thought to revelation. It's it's impossible not to. Every human being is going to process revelation, right? There are certain principles in place by which we interpret the Qur'an and the Sunnah, and we don't violate those principles, but human intellects vary, and that's why interpretations vary. And that's always going to be the case.